Well, we've been at this full-time RV life thing for about six months now. Yeah. But we're still newbies. Yeah, in the RV world, we're, we're newbies. Yeah. How long do you think you're newbies? Oh, I'd say at least the first year. Yeah, I'd say so too. Yeah. I'd say about a year. But, um, but we've learned a lot. And I think while we're, while we're still newbies, we need to talk about the stuff that you have to have if you're an RV newbie. Yeah. So I don't think we had enough experience in the first month or so to know what we really needed or yeah. what is a must. Mm -hmm. I think about six months in, I think we're, we're qualified as RV newbies and to give some advice on what are must haves. Yeah, make life easier. Yeah, now everybody has their own version of this list. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. These are our musts. They might not be your must, but hey, if you just get uh, one or two things out of it, then that's cool. Mm -hmm. And so, some of these are really like must. You yeah. have to have this. Like, yeah. And some of it's like we have to have this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for our sake and happiness, <laughs> we need this. All right. The first thing we're going to talk about is the Valterra RV stabilizers. Yeah. That's what these guys are here. We did a video on this before, and. These are not weight bearing, they're just aluminum frame, but what they do is they keep the RV from rocking side to side and front to back. Um, it's significant. Yes. Um, you wouldn't think so, but if you if you got into your RV and you walked from one side to the other, and then you put the, the stabilizers up, and then you did it again, there's a noticeable difference of how much sway. Now, these are not necessarily a must-have item for me, <laughs> but I'm the heavy walker. Yes. So it is a must have item for Leslie. <laughs> the ones that you put in the back, they go right across the frame there. And those are the ones that keep the uh, RV from bouncing side to side. They're about 50 bucks each. So if your biggest problem is going side to side and you don't think you need a stabilizer to stabilize front to back, then you only need to get one. But for us, we went ahead and got the second one. So it's about a hundred bucks for the pair. And let me show you where the other one is and what it does. All right, here's the second stabilizer. And it goes right in the frame underneath the stairs and it's it's going this way so this is going to keep your rv from rocking front to back i don't think we have a huge problem front to back but i mean, figure we go ahead and do it anyway that way we're stable left to right front to back now you're going to want to make sure that you take these bad boys off before you put your hitch back down to hook up to your truck because like i said these are not weight bearing they're aluminum they're only meant to keep your rv from rocking left to right and front to back so if you try to, to level your jack or you try to put your, your hitch back down to hook up, you're going to break these, mm -hmm. which we've done Yes. and had to replace them. <laughs> <laughs> the next item that is a must have for us is the RV snap pads. We didn't know that these were a must have until we had the snap pads. But these are the snap pads down here. It's uh, recycled rubber, from tires, things like that. Um, they just snap right onto your, onto your jacks. And once they snap on, they're on forever. Very durable. We've had this on grass, on gravel, and on concrete. No issues. And it alleviates the problem of having to have the blocks and having to get them all centered on your leveling jack before they go down. So snap pads are about 100 to 160 bucks, depending on what model of RV you have. But you can go over to snappads.com and you can put in all your information on your rig. They'll let you know exactly what model you need and how much it's going to cost you. But for us, definitely worth the investment I think ours were on the on the higher end because mm -hmm. we had to have six of them and we have a bigger rig so I think it was about 160 bucks for us um, so I, I know they don't make them for every RV so make sure you check in there to make sure that they make them for your RV but worth the investment for us not having to worry about it we just go and unhook and hit the auto level button we're inside now <laughs> we're talking about the next item yes which is a washer and dryer the washer and dryer. <laughs> we have the stackable Splendid. Am I saying it right? Splendid. 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 <laughs> splendid. Church it up. I'm gonna say splendid because she said splendid. So I'm gonna trust your judgment. Okay. okay. For once. Yeah. <laughs> um. So this is a must have. Yeah. Yes, it is. I've had it for about six months, and so why is it a must have? Because. I don't want to use somebody <laughs> else's machines <laughs> and have to check on my clothes and walk back and forth. Yeah. Or and go pay. To, yeah, or go to the laundromat or whatever. Yeah. Um, I just pay up front. 
and have it with me at all times. Yeah, it has been really convenient. We were um, we had heard different mixed reviews about different kinds. Yeah. Uh, there's the all-in-one washer dryer, and we haven't. This is the only thing we have experience with is yeah. this washer and dryer. Well, I had no warm fuzzies with an all-in-one. Nothing about it sounds good. Yeah, we've heard bad things. Yeah. Like he really small loads takes forever to to dry because it has to get all the water the out from the wash. From the wash, yeah. And then so it takes forever to dry yeah. and. So these yeah. are separate, a little more expensive, mm -hmm. um, and it's the stackable. Um, one of the other downsides is it takes up a space in your closet. You do lose closet space. But. I will sacrifice closet space. There's only two of us, and we still have plenty of, of closet space, yeah. so it's not I really. I mean, it would have been, if not closet space, good storage space, too, but. Yeah, but we'd rather have the washer and dryer. Yeah. Now, the washer and dryer is expensive. Yeah. Uh, it's about a thousand bucks for the washer. And it's about seven hundred to eight hundred dollars for the dryer. Yeah. So together, mm, seventeen, eighteen hundred bucks, depending on where you go. If you get online, you probably get a little cheaper. But if you're buying a new RV, yeah. um, you might want to go ahead and just roll it into the price of your whole deal, mm -hmm. and then you won't feel the sting as bad. Yeah. All right, the next item that we think is a must-have is some kind of a propane gauge. We're going to show you what we have, which is the the very cheap version. You can get it for like 10 to 12 bucks at Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, Amazon, whatever. And that's just this guy right here. So when you turn your propane gauge on, you'll be able to see about how much propane you have left in your tanks. Well, you can probably tell I'm not wearing the same clothes and it's not nearly as sunshiny and nice out today. But um, we had an error in, in filming. Leslie was filming for us and... Uh, uh, when she went to go record she was already recording so when she hit the record button it stopped recording and so we lost uh, the footage for the we were recording for this item which is the the elbow connector right here it keeps you from having to hook the line directly in there if you hook the line directly in there then it, it pulls that that hose down and kind of kinks it and then you don't get as good of a water flow through there so um, really inexpensive item and um, Sorry we had to reshoot, but hey, stuff like this happens. <laughs> now you notice I have another one of these L connectors down here. The reason why is because you get these guys in the package with, with your filter, or you can buy these on their own. This is the second one we've had, and they both leaked. Like, not like drip, drip leak, like shooting out of the seams leak. So when you have your, your water fixture at the RV park that we're at, like this, where it's so close to the ground, you're not going to be able to fit your filter here and your hose is just not going to be enough room and this guy leaks so we got another elbow fitting right here so we have two of those and uh, it's able to kick that thing out this way so I can fit all my all my fittings over here all right the next thing in keeping with the, the water trend is this the split valve right here uh, it has two uh, areas that split off one to go to the main line right here and the other end right here that I keep open so when I want to do uh, flushing of my black tank, I can hook to this instead of having to take all this off, hook up the black hose line, flush the black tank, unhook it, and then hook up the main line again. So this just frees up another spot. Or if you want to hook up to wash the RV or wash the truck, we can hook up to here. We don't have to worry about unhooking our whole setup just to do that. And it's about five to eight bucks. All right, still on water. <laughs> Next thing is the, the water pressure regulator. This is important because a lot of RV parks have high water pressure. And if you hook up to that without a water pressure regulator and you turn on the lines through your RV, it potentially could blow out some of your lines. Uh, we had one of these issues when we were hooked up at our friend's house and we had the, the, the leak in the, in the ice maker. I thought I blew up all the lines, but I didn't blow up all the lines because I forgot to put on the regulator. But that's this guy right here. Um, they come in different different shapes and sizes. Some of them come with gauges. Some are without. The most common one you'll see is just like looks like just this little piece right here without the gauge. And basically, you can on ours it has the gauge, so you can see what the what the pressure is and if you get into a trouble area. But for the most part, it doesn't have that, and it'll it'll automatically put you between 40 and 50 psi, which is safe. So uh, any kind of a, a regulator you need to have so you don't blow out your lines. Our next must have. <laughs> the air fryer we have a new wave air fryer and um, six quart mm -hmm. and which is plenty for us yeah we cook almost everything we cook is in in the air fryer I'd say a good 
four to five of the weekly meals come out of this air fryer. The good things about the air fryer is it's it's small, doesn't take up a lot of space. Yeah. It doesn't make the air RV all hot. No. So it doesn't like put off a bunch of heat. Yeah. Um, and it's just enough food for us, for yeah. just us two. If you have a bigger family, then you might have to come up with something different. Or you might have to, do they make bigger they, they ones? They make an eight. They make an eight quart, yeah. so you can do that. But in, in the six quart, you can fit a lot of food. We've yeah. done steaks and wings and- Pork tenderloin. Ribs. Ribs. Um, all kinds of fish. chicken. Fish, we've done fish, yeah, fish, and the RV didn't smell. Yeah, it keeps the smell contained in this guy, yeah. which is pretty good. Um, we've even done uh, the Cornish game hands. Yes. Two whole hens will fit in this bad boy. Yeah. And it doesn't take a lot to heat up. Mm -mm. Doesn't take a long time to cook. No. And how much are these guys? Versions range. The brands yeah. range. But for ours, the six quart. Ours, we paid just over a hundred when yeah. it was all said and done. We loved it so much we bought Lauren one. Yes. And it was cool too because it comes in Leslie's favorite color. <laughs> just the RV. <laughs> the next item is an absolute must-have if you don't want to ruin your whole RV, or ruin your warranty, and have to pay for a, a costly repair. And that's this guy right here, the surge protector. You always want to make sure that you're hooked into a surge protector at your power source because if there's a power surge or there's a lightning strike or their power is not reliable at the RV park that you're at, has a chance that it could fry out your whole wiring harness in your RV and then you're going to be liable for that and have to pay for that. Not covered under warranty. Not fun. I'm not sure exactly how much it costs, but it's got to be a lot. And you're going to be without your RV for a while. And for us, that's our house. We can't afford to do that. This guy is like 90 bucks on Amazon. There's a bunch of different kinds that you can get. Um, this is the first and only one that we've ever had. We've never had any problems. And what we always do first is we plug this in. We'll flip on the breaker and then it gives you a series of lights on here to let you know if it's safe or if there's any errors it lets you know what kind of errors those are and you can look those up online to see what you can do to remedy those or you can have your rv park move you to another location and you can check the power source there but we always plug this in first check these lights before we hook this part to the rv you don't want to hook it to your rv hook it in here and then there's errors and it could be still sending you know dangerous currents to your rv so I definitely must have 100 bucks well worth the investment to protect your major investment the next must have yes tire pressure monitor system luckily we haven't had to use this yet in an emergency yeah I was gonna say what do you mean we haven't used it well we use it to, to let us know what the tire pressure is and the temperature is we check that before we go on every trip mm -hmm. every time before we hook up and then once we get there I check to see what the tire pressure is but it also has an alert system on it to where if you have a leak or if you have a blowout a sudden loss of pressure or a sudden increase in temperature it'll alert you so that you can stop before you have a major blowout mm -hmm. and before it destroys your RV because we've seen a lot of different posts yeah where people don't have one of these and a tire blows out and they have no idea. Yeah, what way didn't know. And nobody tells them. <laughs> I mean, I would pull up somebody and honk at them and say, hey. But those treads start flapping around. Yeah. We've even seen it where it's ripped through people's floors. Yeah. Ripped their whole fender off, ripped yeah. part of their slide out, broke their stairs. Mm -hmm. I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff. It is crazy. Um, that's expensive. Yeah. So if you have a tire pressure monitor system, um, it'll give you a quick alert to where you can pull off and fix that stuff or get your roadside assistance before you have a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. Now these are expensive. Yeah, they are. The one that we have is the tire minder and it's about 350 bucks. Um, but we went ahead and made the decision before we ever even took off full time yeah. that this was gonna be a necessity. We did a lot of research yeah. on it and seeing those pictures scared me really. Yeah, <laughs> it does. I, I, was, I was scared into buying this thing, you know, but it's it's like insurance you're buying <laughs> peace of mind yeah you know so it's worth the investment it's definitely worth it um and possibly more than 350 dollars if something goes wrong absolutely so. i was just getting ready to say the same thing if you had an issue this thing's going to pay for itself the first time <laughs> it saves you it's going to save you what you paid for way it more. and and more 
Um, yeah, like I said, they're expensive, but I think they're worth it. And there's some that are even way more expensive than this version that we bought. There is, and then there's some that are not as expensive. Um, yeah, but you don't, you, in anything you get what you pay for. Yeah. If you have a vehicle that doesn't monitor your tire pressure, uh, you might want to get the one that has more of the connectors. Yeah. Uh, our truck already has that built into mm -hmm. it, so we didn't need to get that for the truck. So ours only has, has four of the little um, probes that go onto the tire. Yeah, where you air up. Yeah, so we have one on each one of the tires on the RV. Mm -hmm. The next item we didn't originally start with. No. We bought this along the way. Not too far along in the way. We got it fairly quickly. Yeah, and it wasn't because we ran into an issue. Mm -hmm. It was a uh, preemptive strike yeah. to avoid any issues. Because again, we got scared into buying this because we saw other people who had issues. Mm -hmm. Who either were run into dead ends or low overpasses or... Well, it, it, it gets you thinking that you cannot trust general GPS yes for pulling an RV so so we got the Rand McNally RV in the 7 there's lots of different kinds of RV yeah. GPS's but mm -hmm. we felt like we needed an RV GPS on the RV GPS it will let you plug in your height your length your weight. weight so then the GPS factors in like your tail swing and how wide you got to turn to get into certain locations mm -hmm. and it automatically avoids low the, bridges yeah crossing the stuff that you're not gonna make it through yeah and also will pick up like construction zones mm -hmm. that it can help you navigate through um, either it can get you around it or it can get you through it safely based on your dimensions and coming here proved that because we see the RV site yeah. from the highway and the exit is just literally right across from it and mm -hmm. we're like why is it not letting us exit at this exit why do we have to go a couple miles to, just the next to, exit. You, to wrap around and come back on the service road yeah and then we found out once we took off for the first day of adventure it is a low, a low clearing yeah. underpass so that's so why we did not get to exit four miles closer. Yeah, and my instinct was telling me like, yeah, to exit. You just wanted. I it. mean, it's right there. I can see the RV. It's right there. Why wouldn't I just exit? That's why. That's why. So I was like, well, I'm gonna listen to the woman this time because our GPS voice is a woman. And I said, well, I'll listen to the woman this yeah. time because the last time on the tire pressure monitor system, I I got burned. Yeah. So listen to the woman, and got here safely. Yep. Because if I would have exited, wouldn't have been able to make that. If mm -hmm. I would have made that turn, no, I would have had to back out. Or we would have lost an air conditioner trying to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we would have had to go all the way down on the service road, turn around all the way back on the... So it mm -hmm. saves you some time. It works. Eventually it'll save you some money. Yeah. Um, how much are these things? We paid... 200 Almost three. It was close to three. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's some more expensive ones. There's always the high end stuff, yeah. but depending on where you go, you can get one for. But the version that yeah. we felt we needed, it was average threes. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'd say probably two to four hundred bucks you're gonna pay for an yeah. RV GPS, depending on which, which kind you want. And where you get it from. I know Garmin, all the major brands, they make them, but we got the, yeah. the Rand McNally because we did a little research and it just seemed like the one that fit for us the best. Yeah. All right, next up on the list is the list. Oh, list. <laughs> <laughs> the checklist. You got to have a checklist, man. Um, I'm retired military. We had checklists for everything. everything. So it just made sense to make a checklist. Um, so we have our travel, travel day checklist. Mm -hmm. It's in this laminated deal here. And on one side is the before the hookup, and the other side is the after the hookup. I've got my dry erase marker, mm -hmm. and we don't leave until everything's checked okay. off. Uh, just to make sure that we don't break anything. So we got stuff like, check the tire pressure, uh, uh, take the stabilizers down, mm -hmm. uh, turn off the propane. Lock all 
compartment doors, all that good stuff we have. And then after the hookup, we have stuff like put the stairs up, you know, get the welcome mat. Um, what else we got? Turn on the tire pressure monitor right system. Right. Engage the tow button. You gotta have the tow <laughs> button because if you don't have the tow button, it's gonna screw your brakes up. Um, so we recommend you get your little checklist. We just have an document protector so we can use the dry erase and use the same one over and over again. Yeah, because I don't care how many times you do it and how many years you've done it. All it takes is Once. one person walking by that wants to stop and chat to, with you for a second while you're doing all your stuff yep. to throw you off your game. Takes your focus off for one second. And when you get back to it, you may overlook something. And it could be expensive. Yeah. So, you need the checklist. There's one time that we didn't get to use the checklist. Yes. For understandable reasons. Yeah. That was the Branson, the great flood of 2019. <laughs> flood 2019. In Branson, yeah. where we got, woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning, in the dark, pouring rain, had to do all this without the checklist, and we broke stuff. We did. Luckily, it was the cheaper end of things. Yeah, we just broke one of the stabilizers. Yeah and lost our welcome mat. Oh yeah, I voluntarily <laughs> gave that up. <laughs> it was underwater. It was nasty. Um, but anyway, yeah, I have a checklist. Uh, All right, we got a bonus item for must-haves for RV newbies. Positive attitude. Positive attitude. <laughs> uh, you have to actually. Oh I mean, man. You really have to. Yeah, because there's gonna be times when you're gonna get frustrated and things aren't gonna go your way and it's just not working out. Mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna get flooded or you're gonna get uh, broke down on the side of the road. It's gonna happen, you're gonna have a flat. Um, all kinds of stuff can happen. Stuff's gonna happen. You're gonna have a bad time. You're gonna get to a bad RV park. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have bad neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, they're gonna be all kinds of bad stuff's gonna happen on the road. At some point in time, yes. But, keep a positive attitude. Right. Shake it off. 90% of the time, things are gonna be good. Yeah. You're gonna be having a good time. You're gonna be out exploring and loving the RV life. Mm -hmm. But I would say actually even less than 10% of the time, you're yeah, gonna yeah. have a bad time. You're just gonna have a bad day every once in a while, no matter yeah. what you do. So, I mean, even. if you were working at a job, living in a traditional life, um, you'd probably have more bad days than good. We did. We did. Um, yeah. So the trade-off is worth it. Mm -hmm. You know, the bad days. So you know the bad days, you shake them off, keep a positive attitude, and you know that tomorrow's probably gonna be better. Mm -hmm. And it usually is. Yeah. I mean, even when we've had the bad the bad times, almost, almost wrecked, flooded out, mm -hmm. um, all that stuff, when you get there and you get set up, yeah, once setup's complete. I mean, literally, like a couple minutes later, you're it's good. Easy to just. Oh, and you're like, well, I'm done. hard parts over. Well, over. We're, we're good. Yeah. yeah. So you figure it out, but you got to keep a positive attitude. Um, if you're not gonna have a positive attitude on the road, you're probably not gonna have a good time. Yeah. And this lifestyle might not be for you because you're probably just a Debbie Downer all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or if you let it consume you. Yeah. The bad moment. It, can't get back into the yeah happy feeling then it ruins the whole trip man it helps if you if you plan ahead for this lifestyle too yeah if you're if you're one a bad event away from having to quit this lifestyle you didn't plan Easy. right yeah you know um I so want to rethink it yeah some people are you know paycheck to paycheck dollar to dollar um one blowout one dead battery mm -hmm. one uh, yeah, breakdown uh, could just end the journey for them. So that would be stressful. Yeah. Um, so if you're thinking about this lifestyle, put yourself in a position to where a few events are not going to end the, the whole deal. Oh, yeah. And that will alleviate some of the stress too. Heck yeah. So anyway, we hope that you have enjoyed our RV must have for newbies. We're still newbies for at least six more months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd say. Um, and if we find anything that, that we, we think you need, we'll, we'll come back on. Um, we, don't, we didn't get paid for any of these items, and 
we didn't get any free stuff and and uh, this is just stuff that we use stuff that we like stuff that we think we need and stuff we think that you might like or you might need it must it's gonna vary yeah um leave us a comment let us know what you think is a must or something that that you have to have out on the road yeah i'm curious i might need it <laughs> <laughs> we still have amazon so, prime on the road so. we can get stuff yes <laughs> You might enlighten me with something that I need. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's it for RV newbie stuff. Yeah. Like we do at the end of all our videos, we're going to honor a fallen hero. We hope you enjoyed our list, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.